This is a part of Peking opera play Empty Fort Strategy, based on Chapter 95 of Romance of the Three Kingdoms. The story tells how Zhuge Liang's first northern expedition, he and 2,500 war-weary soldiers, were besieged by 150,000 fresh enemy soldiers. Just as the situation looked hopeless, Zhuge Liang came up with the Empty Fort Strategy scoring a psychological victory over Sima Yi. Romance of the Three Kingdoms also tells how, on his way to join his sworn brother, Liu Bei, Guan Yu rode thousands of miles, breaking through five passes and killing six enemy generals on the way. In this episode, Guan Yu is depicted as an invincible, righteous man. Unfortunately, the events described in these well-known stories didn't actually take place. In each instance, the stories were made up by Luo Guanchong. In fact, many well-known incidents from Romance of the Three Kingdoms are fictional, the products of Luo Guanzhong's fertile imagination. So how did Luo Guanzhong come up with these well-known stories? Where does fiction end and history begin in the world of the Three Kingdoms? The fictional element in Romance of the Three Kingdoms is primarily about characterization. Although broadly speaking, the romance is based on events that actually took place. In many instances, stories that actually involved one character are attributed to another. What seems to have been important to Luo Guanzhong is how well an episode fitted the character he'd created. The ancient book, Complete Works of Jin Dynasty, contains an article entitled Five Things About Zhuge Liang, written by Guo Cheng. The article describes five things done by Zhuge Liang, Chancellor of the Shu State. The third one concerns the well-known empty fort strategy. Guo Cheng is a Zhuge Liang. Zhuge Liang was the first time of Sima Yi was the first time 都都金州诸军事，他是掌管金州这个大区的军事的，他驻扎在哪儿？驻扎在元城，也就是今天的河南南阳。驻扎在今天的河南南阳的司马懿，跟正在西北齐山一带的诸葛亮根本就见不着面
full of incident and colorful characters. Chen Shao from the Shu State was the first person to commit the history of the era to paper. Chen Shao was born in Nanchong, Sichuan. When he was just one year old, Zhuge Liang died of illness on the Uchang Plain. In 280, when the Wu State was destroyed by the Western Jin Dynasty, the turbulent period of the Three Kingdoms ended. That year, Chen Shao was 48 years old. It took him 10 years to collect and sort materials relating to the history of the century that had just passed. The result was the 30-volume Book of Wei, the 15-volume Book of Shu, and the 20-volume Book of Wu, the three books eventually being combined into records of the Three Kingdoms. By the Northern Song Dynasty, woodblock printed copies of the book collection were being published. Chen Shao was described by later generations as a good historian, especially good at narration. And like his predecessors, Su Yuma Chen and Bang Gu, he also fell in hard times. When Chen Shao was 31 years old, the Shu state was destroyed by the Wei state. Two years later, Su Ma Yan usurped the throne and established the Jin dynasty. We can only imagine the great pain suffered by Chen Chao, an honest and sensitive scholar who had witnessed the demise of his state on two separate occasions. Sima Qian, Bang Gu, Chen Shou, their lives are very difficult. I think there are two reasons. One is the history of the history of the history of the history. It's the truth of the truth. It's the truth of the truth. It's the truth of the truth. So, the leader doesn't like them. The second reason is because they have taken their own experience to the history of the history of the history of the history. 所以他们没有精力去经营自己，去钻营政治。Confucius said, "If names be not correct, language is not in accordance with the truth of things." Legitimacy was the benchmark to evaluate all social values in ancient Chinese society. It was also the basis of political ethics. The key issue of those times was. Which of the three states was the legitimate successor to the Han Dynasty? As an historian, Chen Shao had to make a choice. When he compiled records of the Three Kingdoms, he was an official of the Jin Dynasty. As Ji Yun, also known as Ji Xiaolan, a scholar of the Qing Dynasty, wrote in summary of the general contents of records of the Three Kingdoms, the Wei State had to be the legitimate successor to Han, so that Jin would be a legitimate successor to Wei, because Wei was overthrown by Jin. Clearly, if Chen Shao denied the legitimacy of Jin, he would ruffle some very important feathers. Therefore, though Chen Shao was emotionally attached to his home state, he had to legitimize the Wei regime. He had no choice. Chen Shao's Records of the Three Kingdoms was written in a biographical style. The chapter about Cao Cao was entitled Annals of Emperor Wu of Wei to demonstrate his legitimacy, whereas chapters about Liu Bei and Sun Quan were entitled Biography of the Former Lord and Biography of the Lord of Wu. Wu Zhu Zhuan, Wu Zhu Zhuan is Sun Sun Quan. 但是呢，他虽然称吴主传，但是在新闻当中啊，他完全称名字，就是全怎么全怎么哦，他在新闻当中他就称孙权
就不成成五珠，只有在这个数珠里面，它成先珠后珠。新闻当中看不到这个六扇，呃，六笔六扇这个名名字。曹操时叫奔，曹丕时叫奔，因为他们是正统。但是孙权时叫轰，那是诸侯，待遇。照理说，你先祖也应该是轰。呃，但是他先祖没有轰，先祖用的楚。中道奔楚的话，就是说是同意的，跟奔同意的，所以他像这些地方一字之差，还是表现了他有对故国的君主有某种特别的待遇。In records of the three kingdoms, Chen Shao employed a subtle writing style to conceal his true feelings. Gu Yanwu, a philosopher in the late Ming Dynasty, believed that Chen Shao deliberately referred to Liu Bei and Liu Shan as the former lord and later lord to distinguish them from Sun Quan. Chen Shao's personal feelings and value judgments are even more evident in his evaluation of the rulers of the three states. He wrote. The Chao Chao was an extraordinary man with great talent. Yet he did not praise Chao Chao's morality. From Chen Shou's point of view, Sun Quan was also an outstanding person. Yet he despised Sun Quan's moral character. Chen Shou believed that the downfall of the Wu State. Was a result of Sun Quan's brutality. As to Liu Bei, Chen Shao wrote that he was ambitious, strong-willed, kind-hearted, good at identifying talent. He was a hero on a par with Liu Ban, the founding emperor of the Han Dynasty. Chen Shao praised Liu Bei's decision to entrust Zhuge Liang with his heir, and to take care of state affairs in Bai Di Cheng. This showed Liu Bei's trust for Zhuge Liang. He believed this would be a model for future generations. More than 130 years after Chen Shao's records of the Three Kingdoms came out. Emperor Wen of Liu Song, during the Southern Dynasties, thought that it was too sketchy and had obvious defects. He asked Minister Pei Songju to write annotations for it. Pei Songju spent years looking for more information, finally completing this work in 429. Pei Songzhi 的著里面呢，补充了很多细节。有一些细节呢，裴松之自己在著的时候也说明是。未必一定可靠，但是有这么一种说法，我把它记录下来，让后人参考。这个注呢，是根据《三国志》的情节，然后进行了一补充。这个材料呢，补充了有一百四十多种材料。那么这些材料里边呢，可以说大大的丰富了三国的材料。可以说，没有裴松之的注，也就没有后来的《三国演义》小说。《三国演义》的小说大量的这个细节，不是来自于陈寿的这个《三国志》。More than a thousand years after Chen Shou euphemistically conveyed his comments on Chao Chao, Sun Quan, and Liu Bei in records of the Three Kingdoms, Luo Guanzhong praised Liu Bei and belittled Chao Chao and Sun Quan in his novel *Romance of the Three Kingdoms*, even referring to Chao Chao as a traitor. Here, Liu Bei's regime is depicted as rightful successor to the Han Dynasty. Part of the purpose of the novel *Romance of the Three Kingdoms* is to denigrate Wei and whitewash the reputation of the Shu state. Unlike writers of popular literature, historians of all dynasties have had to tailor their opinion to the prevailing political situation. In Chen Shou's *Records of the Three Kingdoms*, written in the Jin Dynasty, the Wei state was considered to be legitimate. Sima Guang's comprehensive mirror to aid in government, written during the Northern Song Dynasty, 
indirectly acknowledges the legitimacy of the Wei state by adopting the Wei chronology. In the Southern Song Dynasty, the legitimate successor was changed, and this change was also approved in the following dynasties. Conversely, when Zhu Xi compiled outline and details of comprehensive mirror to aid in government, he adopted the chronology of the Shu state. He was also clear that Chao Chao usurped the throne and accused him of being a traitor. Zhu Xi was a great Confucian master, a thinker who made the greatest contribution to the development of Confucianism in nearly a thousand years. His Neo-Confucianism had huge influence on the Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties, coming to be regarded as state orthodoxy. Zhu Xi acknowledged the legitimacy of the Shu state because the Southern Song Dynasty had lost the Central Plains and was unable to recover them. He was worried this would undermine the Southern Song Dynasty's legitimacy, so he used the example of the Three Kingdoms and praised the Shu state, which, like the Southern Song Dynasty, controlled only one part of the country in order to consolidate the legitimacy of the Southern Song Dynasty. It can be said that his outline and details of comprehensive mirror to aid in government laid the foundations for Luo Guanzhong's novel, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Zhu Xi's Tongjian Gamu, in the political problems, especially in the Shu Han, Cao Wei political problems, is the solution. This is the solution. This is the solution. 与朱熹本人的学术地位有关，有关，是吧？当然与《资治通鉴》纲目本身，他的表达非常的简明，易于掌握，这个也有关。所以啊，从朱熹以后啊，基本上说可以说一代无一词，是吧？大家都遵从这个说法。At the end of the Yuan Dynasty. When the official histories of the Song, Liao, and Jin dynasties were being compiled, a famous poet, Yang Wei Jin, raised the issue in his debate on legitimacy. While he supported the legitimacy of the Shu state, in the Qing dynasty, Ji Xiaolan, Grand Secretary to Emperor Qianlong, considered Yang Wei Jin's view ridiculous, removing his piece from complete library in four sections. However, Emperor Qianlong disagreed with Ji Xiaolan and wrote the long piece of his own to express his opinions. He wrote that although Wei and Wu had vast territories, the fact remained that Shu was the legitimate state. He believed that Shu had behaved in line with universal principles and in accordance with the traditional moral concepts of the Chinese people. As such, he ordered Ji Xiaolan to include Yang Wei Jin's article in complete library in four sections and put his imperial decree at the first page of the book. Why? In 756, Cheng'an, the capital of the Tang Dynasty, fell to rebels. The emperor, Li Longji, fled to Sichuan. For the first time, the political center of a central plains regime moved to Sichuan. Du Fu, a poet who also took refuge in Sichuan, thought of Liu Bei and Zhuge Liang, who were also in Sichuan during the Three Kingdoms period. Being unable to carry out his ideals, he respected and admired Zhuge Liang. 
In a poem written during a visit to the Wu Hao Shrine in Chengdu, he wrote, Thrice the king visited him for the state's gains and pains. He served heart and soul the kingdom during two reigns. 400 years later, Wang Shipong, a poet of the Southern Song Dynasty, came to Quezhou, which is in today's Sichuan province. He also admired Zhuge Liang, Du Fu, Yan Zhenxing, Han Yu, and Fan Zhongyan. Having visited the Temple of Liu Bei and Wu Hu Shrine, he wrote, I've seen the stone sentinel maze and carefully read records of the Three Kingdoms. Although I have wine, I will not sacrifice it to the Wei state. It was an expression of his ambition to recover the lost central plains. Fifty years later, Lu Yo, a poet of the Southern Song Dynasty, recalled his former ambition to take part in a northern expedition in a poem. On a snowy night at Guajo Ferry, our warships defeated the enemies. Against the autumn winds, our armed cavalry reclaimed Da San Pass. For thousands of years, there was no one as loyal and devoted as Juku Leon. Nearly a hundred years later, Wen Tianxiang, captured by the Mongol army, wrote the Song of Integrity. Between the heaven and earth, there is righteousness upon which all things grow. Even the ghosts are touched by Juku Liang's heroic spirit to reclaim the lost land. He elevated Juku Liang's memorial on sending out the troops to the height of the soul of the Chinese nation. The Sankoyi. The most direct influence on Luo Guanzhong's Romance of the Three Kingdoms was the picture storybook Popular Stories of the Three Kingdoms. Containing sequential drawings accompanied by relatively simple text, it first came out 700 years ago in the Yuan Dynasty. In 1929, Zheng Zhenduo, a famous historian of literature, published an article entitled Evolution of Romance of the Three Kingdoms in Fiction Monthly. In his article, he wrote, What kind of person was Luo Guanzhong? No one has ever given a detailed account of his life. The reason is that he was a novelist and opera writer. He wasn't regarded as serious enough to merit a biography. In 1919, Hu Shi proposed to reorganize national heritage and rebuild cultures. Books containing anecdotes, novels, and operas began to be treated equally as traditional Confucian classics and included in the objects of historical researches. Luo Guanzhong, author of the novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms, was gradually taken seriously by researchers. Lu Xun wrote in A Brief History of Chinese Novels that Luo Guanzhong was from Qiantang, which is in today's Hangzhou. Hu Shi wrote in the preface to the newly published Romance of the Three Kingdoms that people used to say that the author of Romance of the Three Kingdoms was a man from Hangzhou named Luo Guanchong, who lived in the late Yuan and early Ming dynasties. Until 1931, when Zheng Zhenduo found a book that recorded operas in the Yuan and Ming dynasties in Tianyi Pavilion in Ningbo, a paragraph in it says that Luo Guanzhong was from Taiyuan 
Shanxi province. He didn't have many friends, but his literary works were refreshing. This is the earliest and most reliable reference to Luo Guanchong's place of birth. For Zheng Zhenduo, this was a revelation. It proved that earlier statements on Luo Guanchong's hometown were wrong. While the view that Luo Guanchong was from Taiyuan, Shanxi province, became the mainstream one, during the 1980s, things began to change. During this period, renewed interest in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms brought the issue of Luo Guanchong's hometown once again into question. The debate over whether he was from Taiyuan in Shanxi province or Dongping in Shandong province continues to this day. Before Luo Guanzhong wrote Romance of the Three Kingdoms, the legitimacy of the Shu state was widely accepted, a perspective reflected in popular stories and dramas. However, Luo Guanzhong was still not satisfied. He thought these popular literary works were crude and misrepresented. They contained a lot of stories about the Buddhist concept of karma, and these stories were not consistent with historical facts or Confucian concepts. As a result, they were not accepted by intellectuals at that time. Therefore, Luo Guanzhong believed it was his mission to highlight the social significance of his novel from a moral and historical perspective. When he wrote the novel, the people praised the Shu state and denounced the Wei state, not simply because the legitimacy of the Shu state was recognized by the authorities. People have always chosen to follow those who treat them better. This prompted Luo Guanchong to depict Chao Chao as a cruel and treacherous man and Liu Bei a kind-hearted man. In his depictions, Luo Guanzhong was creating literary models of Confucian morality. Now,现在看到的《罗冠中的三国演义》这个文本呈现出来的给大家的各种各样非常丰满的三国人物的形象，它肯定不是罗冠中个人创作的一个成果。而是长期以来的不同历史时期、不同社会阶层，从他们各自的历史处境、生活处境出发，给历史人物的一个特定的情感的价值观念的一个投射。啊，在这种投射下，他们不断的在塑造新的三国人物的形象。千百年来。就是参与创作《三国演义》的《三国故事》的这这么多的这个人群思想观念都在其中，所以他他应该是一个集大成，他应该是一个整理者，啊，整理基础上的一个创一个创作。从这个角度说，呃，中国传统文化的很多东西。This is the earliest edition of Romance of the Three Kingdoms, published in 1522. In the preface, the author commented on the relationship between history and fiction. He wrote that in addition to facts, 
history should also include standards of value judgment. Historical records are difficult for most people to understand. Luo Guanzhong's novel, however, demonstrates the social ideals advocated by Confucianism in plain words. It's a work that anyone can read and understand. In the early years of the Qing Dynasty, Mao Zongang said that Romance of the Three Kingdoms was the most popular novel among scholars. He believed people loved the novel because there were so many heroes in the period of Three Kingdoms. He even prepared a revised edition of the work. Sangoyai 众多的三国版本当中，自清代康熙年间以来，这三百年间流行最广的是毛伦、毛宗刚父子修改平越的《三国演义》，我们通常简称为毛本三国。毛宗刚啊，他们突出了作品的。正统的倾向大家知道把明代状元杨慎的这个说这个什么呢十七史里面的一个这个词给挪过来的但是它跟三国演义珠联璧合就是这首诗放在前面一个什么作用一个起到了一个基调就是什么呢奠定了一个悲剧的氛围
but creative writers are not the only sensitive agents of social changes. Many historians with profound insights have assumed social responsibilities. Chen Mu, a great scholar of Chinese traditional studies, believed that historical studies concerned not only the past, but also held the key to the future. So 因为它是民间的价值,民间的喜好,它仍然是一个重要的问题. Romance of the Three Kingdoms was completed in the 14th century, about a thousand years after Records of the Three Kingdoms. The dividing line between historical fact and fiction has always been a cause of controversy. As Zhang Xuechan, a Qin Dynasty historian, remarked, while Romance of the Three Kingdoms contains mostly facts, the fictions it contains have confused the readers, giving them a misleading view of real history. However, it is undeniable that for more than 600 years, since the Ming and Qing dynasties, politicians and intellectuals have used it to interpret national policies and draw lessons from it while ordinary people have used it to learn about life in the world. For that reason, in all the long history of China, there are few epochs that have the same hold over the popular imagination. It is undoubtedly closely related to Romance of the Three Kingdoms and the operas adapted from the novel. Even before The Romance of the Three Kingdoms was completed, there were already many operas about the Three Kingdoms. There were 21 Yuan operas about the Three Kingdoms period, including Guan Yu meets Lu Su, written by Guan Hanqing. Roughly 60 about the Three Kingdoms, including incomplete ones, have been identified. This shows how popular these operas were back then. After the birth of Peking Opera, operas about the Three Kingdoms became even more popular. In the mid-19th century, Lu Shangkui, a scholar, joined the Sanqing Troupe, one of the four major Hui opera troupes. He and Cheng Changgung, the troupe leader, wrote and directed a 36 scenes opera the Three Kingdoms. Peking opera artists endow Zhu Guliang, Cao Cao, Guan Yu, Liu Bei, Sun Quan, Zhou Yu, and other characters with more vivid personalities. To some extent, the emergence of the operas about Three Kingdoms elevated Peking opera. At the same time, operas about the Three Kingdoms expanded the influence of the novel, offering another way for the common people to learn about the Three Kingdoms. Therefore, with the help of Peking opera, the ancient Three Kingdoms gained a new lease on life. In a
，他曾经创作了四部，改编和创作四部《三国戏》。你看骂王朗，他是借诸葛亮骂王仁的口，自己骂清政府。这从高台教化，就是说他就是有意识的用他的戏曲去唤醒民众。是吧？认识当时政府的腐败，唤起大家这个爱国的这种热情。The Court Theatrical Office was an imperial organization in the Qing Dynasty that managed theatrical affairs. The office issued a widely accepted guide on costumes and makeup of various opera figures. The instruction beside the painting of Chao Chao says it should be strictly followed. Unsurprisingly, artists came to believe that the portrayal of Chao Chao as white-faced, which signifies treachery, reflected the will of the imperial court. Yan Xi, he is not only for the Tongzhi people. Actually, the people of the Tongzhi have some ideas of values. 啊，比如说孝敬父母啊，是吧？呃，这个这个，呃，朋友之间应该有义气啊。这里呢，实际上呢是一种，呃，大家比较从同志阶级也好，从那个老百姓好，其中有一些大家比较认同的，有一些伦伦理道德的东西，有时候在舞台上还是比较受欢迎的。More than 1,700 years ago, Chen Shao was still studying in the Shu state, his teacher warning him that though he would be famous for his talent, he would be slandered for it too. It was an accurate prophecy. Chen Shao's state was overthrown. His career was a rocky one. Demoted twice, even when he made a comeback, his career continued to be plagued by power struggles. Unable to fulfill his potential, he died a broken man. Therefore, some scholars say that it is often the losers, rather than the winners, who possess real insight into historical reality. It was probably Chen Shao's fate to live in the shadows after his state was conquered. A thousand years later, the first full-length serial novel in Chinese history appeared, its author an unknown scholar. To this day, people are still debating whether Luo Guanzhong, author of the novel, was from Taiyuan in Shanxi province, or Dongping in Shandong province. Based on limited historical records about Luo Guanchong, we vaguely know that he was a lonely person, and although very talented, he, like Chen Shou, did not fulfill his potential. Indeed, so obscure was he that nobody knows his final resting place. All anyone knows is that he became a great writer one with an enduring reputation. Novelist Luo Guanchong and historian Chen Shao were separated by a thousand years of time. They met and collided across time, and together they enlightened future generations with the light of Chinese civilization.